Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great day. Um, you know, when you're out here, first of all, I'm literally dealing with um, jet lag. My body is kind of like half in, half out right now because uh, it's 6 a.m. here. Uh, in Oxnard where we had an earthquake last night um, I think the earthquake warning was worse than the actual earthquake because I was actually laying on the bed kind of half sleep and all of a sudden my cell phone starts going through and it says you know hit the ground duck and cover cover your head and everything else earthquake on the way and it's just like you know an amber alert alarm it was crazy and I got out of the bed and I didn't know what to do. My daughter is sitting on the couch and things. And she's like, can you feel it? She said, I feel it. I feel it. Okay. So I was like, all right, that was it. So here in Oxnard, you could slightly feel it for a few seconds, but not major. As some places it was really, really hot and heavy. Um, maybe it was the hotel itself or the beach sand. I don't know, but we didn't hardly feel it. But it was only like 50 miles from here was the center of it. Some places got shook pretty good. Anyway, be that as it may, <clears throat> being here, um, you've been so focused, been so focused on the Cowboys practice and hanging out with my brother from another mother in law nation and everything else that you miss out on some of the news and things. One thing that has um, I missed, which actually happened uh, the day before yesterday, was Dwayne Thomas, former Dallas Cowboys running back, has passed away at 77 years of age. And I talked about Dwayne Thomas a couple of years ago. Some of you younger fans have no idea who Dwayne Thomas is. But Dwayne Thomas was our running back um, for our first Super Bowl. And this is like a deja vu moment because Dwayne Thomas, his rookie year came out and was an incredible phenomenon and wanted to renegotiate his contract. Tex Stram, our GM, basically said, we're not renegotiating your contract. We're not going to do it. And Dwayne Thomas ended up playing and helping to lead the Cowboys to a Super Bowl, but did not speak. He was not happy about his situation and things. And this is where we're seeing in real time right now how things have gone sour with Brandon Ayuk and um, the San Francisco 49ers. And this is where you start to wonder and say, okay, can this situation with CeeDee Lamb that has been going on and on, we hear Jerry that, you know, well, we've sent over an offer and things like that and doesn't seem to be in any kind of a hurry, something that they should have taken care of last year. In retrospect, imagine had they signed him last year to, say, a $25 million contract. And we weren't sitting here dealing with this, that he was in training camp. Now, some people will say, well, he had a great season because... He was in a contract year trying to negotiate. Well, we'll never know one way or another, but I do know right now that he is not here. And this is going on the second week of training camp that is almost in the books. And um, they need to get this thing done. Now, I will say, however, that the group of wide receivers that we are actually pretty deep right now and they're getting a lot of work with number one reps with Dak Prescott which will bode well now I'm not ready to say we don't need CD but um, some people may start that but this morning and I have no idea how long it's going to take to upload in here because uh, the Wi-Fi has been terrible so I'm not going to make my morning video here that long it may literally take hours but I actually want to give you guys a taste of what the situation was with running back Dwayne Thomas 
And there's so many of you guys out there that are always saying, you know, well, we got five rings and touting about the things that the Dallas Cowboys have been and have done without knowing the stories or the people behind them. And Dwayne Thomas was an incredible player that unfortunately, I think the contract situation is what did in his career. The 23-year history of the Dallas Cowboys is steeped in a winning tradition that has produced an illustrious honor roll of outstanding players. These men, so famous, so celebrated, became collectively known as America's team. But this long line of white-hatted heroes has not been without its black sheep. The most infamous being Dwayne Thomas. Thomas was the Cowboys' number one draft pick in 1970, a choice that stunned the critics. But his distinctive running style ate up yards, and doubters ate their words. Dwayne Thomas was a, a unique player when he came into the league because he had a a very unusual gliding motion when he ran. He would look like he was going maybe three quarters of the speed, and then he would see an opening and would have a very, very smooth burst and a very good feel when he got into the secondary. Thomas gained over 800 yards in his rookie year, and his rushing average was the highest in the NFL. He could also block and catch. He was a complete running back, cast in the mold of Jimmy Brown, who appeared to be a model team player. Four TDs. And it was something that I didn't mind doing. I didn't mind paying the price to win, because that's what I was there for. You know, people unite on the basis of what they have in common. And football was something that we all had in common, and we united on that. And we were able to um, achieve this goal and made, that had a domino effect, because everyone had something to contribute. The Cowboys won their first NFC championship in 1970, but smiles disappeared the next year when Thomas proved a goldfish can behave like a shark in the same fishbowl. I thought he was going to be one of the greatest running backs of all time. And then unfortunately something happened in his, in his second year that uh, changed his whole attitude and, and then it got to be uh, very miserable to be around. During the offseason after that year, uh, it looks and appears that he did get on drugs after that year. And then when he came back, he, you can never tell what he was going to be like in any given day. You might walk by him one day and he would say, you say hello to him and he would say hello to you. The next day he'd say, hey, leave me alone. Yeah, don't talk to me. These forces whatever they were, whether it was an, an Asian or uh, his feelings towards, towards life, uh, he went into a, a shell and he was tough to communicate with and it affected his play and it affected his opportunities in the National Football League. 1971 was the silent season of Dwayne Thomas. A loner, isolated from the team, he became an enigma known as the Sphinx. I made a statement prior to going into the season. I said, gentlemen, this is my last interview. Believe me. Because look, I'm going to work. That's why I was brought up. Because when we, see, we were brought up this way. When you're working, you don't talk. Because you get more things done. In 1971, although Thomas ran silent, he ran deep. He gained over 800 yards and scored the most touchdowns by any runner in the league. Amazing running back. But for all the excitement he created on the field, off it, he created turmoil and tension. Well, when you got that kind of tension in your football team, it's pretty tough. And he would go, he would be in a, in a meeting room and he'd have his head down, his eyes closed the whole time. He'd never look or talk or anything in a meeting room. At the early meeting, you were considered late if you didn't answer your name when, when it was called on roll. And so Dwayne never answered his name. And usually they would skip over it. Uh, this one particular day, uh, the guy who was calling roll, uh, you know, for some reason decided that, you know, Dwayne was going to answer here or, you know, you know, like everybody else. 
And he said Thomas, and Dwayne said nothing. He said Thomas. And finally, he said Thomas maybe 10 times, and Dwayne didn't say anything. So I think it was Mike Dick that stood up and said, well, Dwayne, if you're here, why don't you answer like the rest of us? And, uh, you know, Dwayne sort of looked at him and smiled at him, and he was sitting in these, you know, we were sitting in these, these little uh, elementary school seats, these prim primary school seats, and he just took a seat and reversed it and faced the back of the room. I would have probably uh, suspended any other player that would have uh, acted as he did. And the reason that we could tolerate him is that he never made any errors when he went on the field. So obviously he's listening and he was studying. And the result was we were able to go to the Super Bowl, but it was almost unreal the way he was that particular year. Thomas almost burnt down the house the Cowboys had carefully built. But he ran through the fires like a man wearing an asbestos suit. He ran Dallas to their second straight NFC title and into Super Bowl VI, where his legs carried them to their first world championship. Not lost amidst Super Bowl euphoria was Tom Landry's uncharacteristic coddling of Dwayne Thomas, a fact that came to bear the next season. Tom Landry is pretty consistent as far as how he treats players. Uh, Dwayne was a very difficult situation and had to be treated uh, a bit different or they would have had to get rid of him immediately. Landry really tried to work with Dwayne. No one knew how I was going to react or how he was going to react, so therefore you had tension all the time. Of course, you had to treat Dwayne Thomas one way and 44 players a different way, and I just never felt like that was a, a good situation to be in, and I'm sure that Coach Landry felt like he could bring him around. But eventually, uh, you know, he just felt like it was, uh, he didn't have any choice and he had to get rid of him. It came to force the next season in training camp when Dwayne did not go to practice. He was, he was traded to San Diego. The Chargers tried to get Thomas in step, but he had become a morose, tragic figure, a shell of the player he once was. In San Diego, he not only wasn't heard, he wasn't seen. He suited up for only one game, but didn't play. He ended up with the Redskins in 1974, where his career finally became a corpse. To this day, the Sphinx remains a riddle that may never be solved. Dwayne Thomas, who was the AP Offensive Rookie of the Year, ended up having 1,600 yards rushing in the two seasons he had with the Dallas Cowboys in 14 game seasons and being part of the driver that got the Cowboys their very first Super Bowl. <clears throat> Basically, he averaged a touchdown every 100 yards that he rushed. Think about that for a second, guys. And unfortunately, contract issues led to him being traded and probably never living up to the potential that was Dwayne Thomas. I hope that the Dallas Cowboys probably won't because it doesn't seem like they learn anything, that everything is always, you know, wash, rinse, repeat. Um, with their history, we're doing the same thing with CD that we did with Zach Martin, that we did with Zeke Elliott, that we did with Demarcus Lawrence, that we've done with Des Bryant. We keep making the same mistakes over and over and doing the same things over and over again, expecting a different result. I hope, and my hope was that they would get C.D. Lamb's contract and stuff done um, this week. It would be great. At this point, um, this week is lost. You know, tomorrow, uh, yeah, tomorrow is the scrimmage with the Rams. Friday will be game preparation walkthroughs, probably, I will imagine. But then again, I could be wrong. They may look at it and say, we're going to go ahead and have number ones doing their thing. And then, of course, we're going to have the, you know, the young guys, the, the bubble guys playing the preseason game. Maybe that's going to be the approach. But then get started after the game of hopefully having CD in camp. I don't know where it goes, y'all, but I appreciate you guys. And I wanted to... I've always been, because these are players that were my heroes growing up, being 58 years old and being a lifelong Dallas Cowboy fan, 
I have an affinity for all of those guys out there that really didn't get paid, that played football while having an off-season job that mainly played for the love of the game. I'm Mark Holmes, and I appreciate you guys for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. And I'll see you soon. Peace.